This handsome guy is Phil, and Phil is many things. Devoted father, loving husband, part-time male model, a snappy dresser, has one of the most glorious beards I've ever seen, and of course is a very talented and entertaining woodworker. Phil is a consummate professional, with interview skills second to none. Just ask these guys. Oh, I'm having so much. Oh. Yesterday I got hit. Oh. Recently, Gradually Wizardly turned five and to celebrate that milestone, Phil set out a simple challenge. Here's the challenge. Build something you could not have made five years ago. Not just make a thing you couldn't make before, but I want you to give it away to someone you legitimately care about. I accept that challenge. In this video, I'm going to turn this IKEA table into these IKEA inspired craft storage toolboxes. So keep watching to find out why I chose this particular project and stick around to the end for a special additional surprise. <laughs> this IKEA craft desk used to be used by my young apprentice, but since we built her a new desk, this one is now destined to be recycled for its timber. There is a strange but wonderful irony in recycling a piece of IKEA furniture to ultimately turn it into something that's inspired by another IKEA product. So why did I choose this particular project for this challenge? Well to answer that question we need to go back in time about three years. I was in IKEA looking for items for my new house that I was building. And it was there that I stumbled upon this rather innocent looking craft toolbox that I thought would be great for the young apprentice since she loves to draw, paint and craft. That was until I saw the $55 price tag. It was at this point I said to myself, surely I could make this. Don't call me Shirley. It was that simple question of asking myself, could I do this, that has now led me down this journey of working and making. So after three years, I can finally answer that question. Can I make this? Yes, yes, I can now. Over at the bandsaw, I began the process of resawing each of the boards. I got through the first four or five boards without too much of an issue, but on the sixth board, I noticed something strange with the saw. Well, this was a little bit scary. I was trying to work out why the bandsaw started tracking really violently back and forth this way. And I thought, oh, it must be off balance. So I was uh, adjusting these bits here, but it was just getting worse and worse. So I opened it up and released the blade a bit and I discovered whoo, that it was probably moments away from completely imploding. So I'm not sure what's been happening there, Maybe it's on a bit too tight, I'm not sure, but that's a lucky escape. So I'm gonna, I've only got the one resaw blade. I'm gonna have to put this one back on and hopefully finish the rest of these. I'll have to order a new blade, but uh, yikes. I replaced the blade with the one I had on hand. It's a higher tooth count one and it's really not designed for resawing. So despite it being at fairly soft wood, I had to go really slow. Having the right blade in your bandsaw for the purpose that you're using really does make a massive difference. This is me resawing the same timber in real time with this non-resawing blade. So let this really be a lesson. If something doesn't look or feel right when using a tool, stop, assess and make sure everything is okay. A few moments later. With the boards finally resawed, we can glue them together to make panels. I'm sure there'll be some of you saying, well of course you can build it, look at all these fancy and expensive tools you own. It's a complete myth that you can only build something if you have an expensive fully decked out workshop. You can achieve quite a lot with very little. My very first workspace was nothing more than a tiny garden shed with a cheap miter saw, a jigsaw and a cordless drill. You don't need to start out big, you just need to get started. While I wait for the panels to dry, I'll next cut strips to form the hinges that will attach to the top with the bottom of the box.
Next I'll drill out the holes that will accept the Chicago screws over on the drill press. and then rounding off the corners over on the disc sander. Each of these will get a quick round over on the router table. The router table is probably one of my favorite workshop projects that I've completed this year. So if you're interested in seeing how I built it, then here's a link to it now. The panels are now ready and I'll bring them down to final thickness on the planer and trim them to their final dimensions over on the table saw. I made a template out of some 6mm MDF for the handles. This will help keep the handles consistent as we'll need four of these for the build. Sanding the template over at the belt sander is where I had my second scare of the day. I had torn a hole in the belt and while not as dramatic as the bandsaw blade incident, it still was an unexpected surprise. Looking at the state of the belt, it was probably well overdue to be changed anyway. With the template now sorted, I'll use it to cut out each of the handles for the box. Using a pattern bit at the router table will make it easy to get consistent results using the template that we made earlier. Next I'm going to cut all the rebates for the box construction over on the table saw using a dado stack.
and then cut the groove that will accept the bases. The bases are made from recycled IKEA drawers. I wanted to make sure that 100% of this project is going to come from scrap and recycled material. One of the great things about woodworking is being able to reuse and recycle what so many other people would consider trash. Before I assemble the sides, I'm going to add some personalization. I'm going to be using a tool that I've not really discussed in much detail, but hope to in a future video. This CNC carver is really great at making signs and name carving and I even used it in the offcut challenge to make my workshop clock. Finally, with all our pieces ready, we can start the assembly process. A handy tip when you're wanting to clamp smaller boxes like this is to use rubber bands. Cheap, affordable and you can get them in all sorts of sizes so it's good to have an assortment on hand at all times. And of course you always got to check square. That's looking pretty good so we'll repeat that for the other three trays and then move on to the bottoms. These larger rubber bands are actually physiotherapy bands and they make excellent clamps for boxes. You can often find them in chemists or sometimes sports stores and they can be picked up generally pretty cheaply. And of course with everything now dry, we can take the opportunity to give everything a quick sand. Sanding at the best of times is incredibly dull, but a key necessity if you want your projects to come out schmick. As I say, sanding maketh the project. The last step before we can do assembly is to drill out holes that will accept our Chicago screws. This will allow our trays to then cantilever out. During my search to locate a source for Chicago screws, I found myself trying to describe what I was after to a local vendor. He told me that what I actually was after is called a sex bolt. I thought at the time he was just trying to be clever, but after a few web searches, many of which I can't broadcast, it turns out he's right. The common name for this type of fastener is indeed called a sex bolt. I think for now I'll stick to the name Chicago Fastener, I think that's probably safer at least.
Yeah, okay, come on, that's enough testing. Now you might think that the project at this point is finished, and for the most part it is, but it wouldn't be one of my projects if I couldn't at least try to attempt to inject a little bit of form ply into the build. So I think the perfect accessory here will be a little bit of pattern plywood. So let the montage begin. Off camera I cut strips which I then glued into the tray to act as a ledge for the lids I made. And here they are, ready for finish. I'm opting for some hard wax oil for this one, nothing too fancy. It's easy to apply and gives good results, especially on the plywood. I'll apply a first coat here and then come back later, disassemble and apply a final coat off camera. Not bad if I don't say so myself. When I reflect on this project, it really symbolises more than just a challenge, at least for me. It's been a chance to look back and remind myself just how far I've come in three short years and where I might be in another three. I also know and wildly acknowledge that this path, this process, hasn't been done alone. There are so many wonderful builders and makers out there who have not just taught me new things but have inspired me to keep pushing ahead. So my challenge to you is to go out and make something. No matter how big, no matter how small, just go for it.
There's one last thing before I close out today's video, and that's to talk about the special surprise I mentioned at the start. Phil and I share a special bond in that we are table saw bros. We both own the same Sherwood 12 inch hybrid table saw, and in fact Phil is the only other person that I even know of that happens to have this same table saw. So as a special gift in celebration of five years, I thought I'd make him something special for his Sherwood table saw. So congratulations on five years Phil, and for those watching, go ahead and give Phil some love with a follow on YouTube and Instagram. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.